Mainly we are having some technical issues. It's not publishing our live stream at the moment. It's okay. Bear with me. I'm going to give Rodrigo a quick... Oh, there we go. No, it's streaming now. There we go. Awesome. And, and y'all can see the uh, presentation, correct? Yeah. Perfect. Um, so, whenever you're ready to kick this thing off, just let me know. All right. Uh, I think we're going to go ahead and get things started. Uh, normally, I take this opportunity to introduce our guest. But since you are a guest of Mariel, I will let her make the introduction. So, Mariel, if you would, uh, just uh, quickly introduce uh, Maddie. Oh, boy, put me on the spot, huh? No worries. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. No, um, yeah, Maddie uh, is an amazing person, first and foremost. I just wanted to put that out there. But, uh, yeah, I worked with Maddie for... Uh, gosh, it's like two years at Crafty Apes. And uh, even when we were there, I saw her go from, I think when we started, you were a coordinator and then you just had like every position under the sun pretty much. So she is a Jack or Jill, if you will, of all trades. And um, she's like one of the smartest people I know and extremely hardworking and delightful and all those things so yes this is maddie hello everyone um good morning or good afternoon depending on what part of the world you're in um so yeah as, as mariel said we work together at crafty eight um before that i've been involved in the film industry uh for over a decade um hopefully you're thinking surely she can't look that old but uh luckily i was able to work in the film industry starting at a young age um, but yeah, I wanted to talk today about my journey, uh, pathways to success, things I would have done differently, things that um, considering looking back, like I'm very fortunate about, and hopefully y'all take some stuff from it. And if not, um, please ask questions. I'd love to answer them. <laughs> cool. So starting out, um, I grew up in New Orleans, uh, very fortunate to grow up in a city that valued art, uh, music, and culture. Um, so I was inspired by art at a very young age, and this was during a time when the effects were becoming more advanced in film uh, around the 2000s. I remember as a young child uh, watching, I think it was X-Men, and thinking, like, how did they do this? It was like some kind of magic trick I didn't understand. Um, so uh, growing up, I've been passionate about documenting storytelling, trying to figure out movies, watching, um, like, background reels and stuff like that, things going on behind the scenes. Uh, if that sounds familiar, you're probably a creative like me and in school. So. <laughs> but um, all jokes aside, these are some pictures that I wanted to share. Um, these are not like my big aha moment growing up. Uh, this is like some building blocks that uh, everybody has to go along the way. Um, when I was young, this is me on the Harry Potter set. Um, I was very fortunate. It was a happenstance. Uh, I think we, my family won a trip out there to just go behind the scenes. Um, so that inspired me at a really young age. And then going up to LSU, this was my very first gallery show um, in Ireland. Um, I had exactly, like, I think seven things up there that I painted. Um, and then moving on, I like at LSU, I had my very first article published in a magazine um, from working on set and just, you know, picking up some odd jobs. I uh, got noticed because I, no matter how small it was, like seven photos or working on set, like I was super proud, threw it out there, um, talked to people. And then going to LSU and graduating, um, talking to people really got me to where I was today. I went into classes that I was not taking. I um, shook hands. Networking is something no one wants to do. Um, but it, is, it really does get you all over the map in this industry because it's a very, very small industry. Um, the early years, so I was at LSU. I was a sophomore in college. Um, I was running around talking to anybody and everybody I could. Professors, um, I, I know we had a lot of guest professors. And I ran into what would become my future event for. Um, and I was just telling him over and over again, you know, there's these companies in New Orleans that do visual effects. I'll go ahead and play these for you. And this is my first internship that I got. Um, it was unpaid. 
Uh, that happens sometimes. I would not recommend going for unpaid internships because I want y'all to value your work. Um, for me, my circumstances were that I was working at an unpaid internship. Um, I was very fortunate to find these guys. It was literally a man in a computer in a room. And I was like, please let me work for you. I would love doing this, this stuff. Like, this is absolutely amazing. And he was like, yeah, sure. If you want to hang out here on Fridays, let's do it. Um, but like, again, like it wasn't exactly like a, an application process or anything like that. I just got on these emails and was calling people um, and just like trying to get my name out there as best I could. Um, obviously with this stuff, I was very young, still in school. My uh, mentor took over most of this. Um, but like, again, he let me into the software. He let me touch things. He actually allowed me to peek inside the industry. And that was a very strong thing to, um, to be influenced by at a younger age. So, um, moving on while I was in college, I did intern at a few different studios. It was not just in Cindy. Um, I went on working for like government stuff. I went on working for, oops, let me slide the change. Uh, I went on working for government stuff. I did global game jams. I did like anything that I could. Um, I just spread myself far and wide. Um, I documented everything, took pictures of everything. Um, again, like I can't show too much because a lot of it is under NDA, but it's good to just keep that, um, keep your, I wouldn't say like stuff in your arsenal. Um, you really just want to, it makes it easier to document everything uh, early on. And so that way, whenever you do want to put reels together, it's like nice to compare where you've come from and where you are now. Um, so here's just some pictures of me in college doing a global game jam um, right after. This is like early stages of mocap. I don't even know if anybody can recognize this software background anymore. Um, this is early stages of, I guess, what we would call Gollum now, where people are um, basically animating via particle system. Uh, not too impressive nowadays, but what, 2016, 10 years ago? <laughs> And then we'll do. And so after um, I started getting all these internships, and it was really like, um, I want to say odd jobs, uh, modeling here and there, um, particle systems here and there, I started picking up and finding opportunities, getting my name out there. I uh, took up work at a local PBS station. Um, and I was just doing like photos, animated GFX. Um, I was doing like, on set photography, I was doing editorial stuff. Basically, anything that they needed, um, I would be doing it. So, really, just I kind of use that as a stepping stone into um, meeting people, uh, shaking hands, following up. Again, networking is such a big concept for our industry because reputation goes really far. Pros and cons of that, reputation can be good, reputation can be bad. So it's very important to know who you're talking to, always have positive experiences with people. Um, it's incredibly important to know who you're talking to um, and be mindful of what you say because it's so often we see these people in our industry put their purse in their mouth and um, that could be career ending. So advice to you, always be um, kind, uh, kill them with kindness if you can. Um, yeah, so it's like I started radically networking. I got really active on online forums. I looked for local meetups. I grabbed cards. I went to all these artist talks and introduced myself. Um, and I was very lucky to run into some great people who love to teach. Um, that's something that I really value about our industry is that most of the people here, um, it could be kind of scary to reach out to like people that you admire, big names, stuff like that. Um, Honestly, a lot of people just love teaching. We love seeing people succeed in this industry. We love growing this industry. And so um, don't hesitate. Reach out. Uh, let's see. So around 2017, I moved back to New Orleans. I worked for PBS New Orleans right here. Um, this is one of the excursions we did to the NASA station out in, um, I want to say, Mississippi. We also worked with Ken Burns on the country um, documentary that came out recently. And then right at the tail end of 2019, I started ramping up on set work during the weekend. Um, the hustle's real. It's going to be a hustle for the first few years you're out. Um, but then, luckily, I was on an active set when the lockdown began <laughs> in 2019. Um, but, you know, life throws these things at you. Like, right now we have AI going on. We have the writer's strike going on. Um, there's been so many moments in my career where I was like, this is career ending. 
I lost a job, this is career ending. Um, or like getting, like moving in a ladder of motion, I'm like, this is not where I want to be. These thoughts will constantly um, weigh down on you. It's like important to think like everyone struggles, like even here now, like um, studying to become a producer, like working as a project manager on these big name uh, clients, I still am like, you know, I could be doing more. So that's something that as an artist and as a creative, you will just have to, um, I guess, come to terms with. Uh, it's difficult seeing where you want to be and then kind of finding the steps towards there. And so, um, you know, during COVID, I thought, like, we all thought, like, this is not, this is not great. This is not going to go well. Um, but isn't it pivoted to a golden age of streaming? Um, and I've done my best work during the lockdown. Um, let's see. At the end of 2020, I started working for the Baton Rouge branch of Crafty Ape. Um, that's where I met Muriel. Fantastic. Um, and ironically, the supervisor that I met as a sophomore at LSU that I said would become my teacher mentor and I kept in touch with is now my boss. And we work together every day. Uh, we work on and off um, on odd jobs. I wouldn't say like I worked on some shark movies. I worked on stuff that like, I mean, it would be straight to streaming. <laughs> it's really, and I like, I love those projects the most because those are the ones that um, I feel like really gave me a foundation to like, like what a hard set looks like versus like a cushy set. Um, and what a cushy set would be if you have notes, you're solid. Um, an uncushy set would be you show up and they're like, what are we shooting today, right? Um, so I kind of now work into all of the aspects of um, the effects. So if we are working as a script to screen company, which means that we take scripts in. Um, we break them down as producers. We talk about what we would like to do as a VFX team um, and what we wouldn't like to do, what we try to get off our plate. We work with the client's budget um, all, the entire process. We'll go on set. I do a lot of on set work. Um, now, I love on set work. Um, I think the further up you get into the industry uh, as artists, the more opportunity you have work on set. Um, and I would tell everybody that like it, it's a great opportunity to go. I did some data wrangling. Um, I do a lot of green screen work. And I think that if you like being on set, VFX supervision, um, on set supervisor, is a great pathway. It's always fun. Um, you're always on the road. If you love to travel, that's the thing for you. So uh, what I do is I would go on and assist these supervisors. I would shoot price. Um, I would take photogrammetry. I would take scans, um, get data in. Um, a lot of the grunt work. And then that gave me a lot of ammunition to um, shake hands with cinematographers, directors. Um, basically, more access is what I was gaining out of these onset um, excursions, as you will. Um, but now I'm in a position where sometimes production, sometimes project manager. Uh, I run a team of coordinators uh, that basically get the project from point A to point B. Um, we do a lot of crewing with um, workers, uh, artists, trackers, basically all fields. We'll, we'll make sure everything's moving smoothly. And I pivoted into more of a managerial um, point of view. Now, why did this happen? Um, I like it. Uh, but what I will say is I feel like I did not have a lot of options because I let my skills lapse. Now, that's really important as an artist to set aside time, like every single week, I would say, to refine your skills. Um, whenever I worked for PBS, I did work for a, uh, like, more of a graphic 2D, and I let my 3D skills last. So when I came over to Crafty, I wasn't able to work on the projects that I, or work to the depth that I really wanted to on projects. Like, I still pick up shots here and there for 2D stuff, for graphic stuff. Um, but again, like if I like if I kept up with my skills, if you value your skills every single day, um, you'll be able to avoid those situations. And it happens so easily. Like our industry moves so fast. Like even now with AI, we're using AI. Like you always want to lean into stuff. You don't want to steer away from it. You know, like our industry is constantly changing. Who knows what's going to happen um, in a year or two? Whenever I was like working on my skills, circa. 2017, I was still using 3ds Max. Uh, as soon as I graduated and stuff, the industry pivoted to Autodesk um, new. And so, like, it's very, very important. Stay on, stay in, like, on forums, stay on newsletters, 
um, read like new releases of Autodesk, listen to lectures. It really has to be um, part passion, part work. Um, it's a hustle. Like it's a strong industry. You gotta get just throw yourself out there and like take the news that you constantly get or that you will get. Take it on the chin because all you do is need one yes, right? Um, so coming out of the golden age of streaming, which is what I call the time of COVID because so many people were home watching TV. We had tons and tons of work. Um, we have now that things are open up. We have more opportunities to work on set. But then again, um, you know, like things are always changing in our industry. So it really kind of goes, um, it's like you're always waiting for, you want to safeguard yourself. You're always waiting for the next shoe to drop. So I guess what I'm trying to say is don't get too, too comfortable. Um, you always want to strive to be better than your last shot, right? Um, so now, like my I've made it moments, um, you're going to have a few of these. You're never to the point. You always want to keep pushing forward, um, like saying that you're comfortable and stuff. Like I, these are my I've made it, and then like I've gone beyond. Like um, sitting here at the film festival with all my crew, now I'm going to Cap State Film Festival. Uh, working on sets with like shark movies, now I'm working on set with 824. Stuff like that. So it's like, I'm like, oh, yes, this is my, my big break, a shark movie. <laughs> but it necessarily, like, you want to take every win as a win. Like, you don't want to minimize it. Like, my my favorite um, memories on set and my favorite, like, opportunities and the stepping stones, like, mean more to me than awards or, like, working on big name stuff. Um, so there's some things that I would have done differently. Um, coming from a family of business owners, I am a passionate artist and I can't be bothered by economics. <laughs> I was very, very wrong. Um, like as much as I am not uh, a business person, I am currently pursuing my master's degree in business administration with a concentration in project management. Um, I should have recognized early on that I uh, should have taken business classes as a way to protect myself. Um, like even if it's just understanding contracts, learning how to leverage like your um, like your work and stuff like that, uh, it's really really important. Take some business classes, take some uh, marketing classes, learn how to sell yourself, learn how to protect yourself um, with knowledge. Because I'm doing it uh, now, but like I mean, I could have changed me way early on, like with how I would leverage. Um, pay or like how I would handle clients coming back with a lot of notes or changing scopes of things. Um, you just really have to do your research and as much as I'm sure creatives aren't business people or don't like business, um, I would highly recommend even if it's like an online class or something, take business classes, learn how to market yourself, stay ahead of the game. Um, it's another weapon in your armory as you would say. So another thing to learn fast. Um, like I said earlier, it's a very small and connected industry, pros and cons, um, reputation to make or break. Uh, there's been a couple of times where I didn't realize I was talking to a director on set, um, and I said some, like, oops things to him about, or I guess five jokes or whatever, and it panned out well, but, like, I was told after that, um, like, the director, that was the director of the entire show, and he's not on set very often. And so I was just like, oh, goodness, like, I really, it was like saying things, I guess, out of turn. Um, it was nothing bad, but you really want to just know who you're talking about on set because, like, it, it could get around or, like, you could say something completely off hinge, and it could mean you getting um, either asked to step down or missing a, a future a future job that you can grab. Um, I know like we work in a lax industry, but like I've seen it end people's careers over bad attitudes or saying something out of turn. Um, companies do have blacklists of people like that they don't want to work with just because of like attitudes and stuff. So again, like always be kind, always be smart, always know who you're talking to. Um, like never get too comfortable. Like this is a profession as well as a passion. And I know that things can get mixed sometimes. Uh, something else I would have done differently is set aside more time, um, like to look into how the industry is developing. Um, getting involved with politics, which is something I never thought I would do. But in Louisiana, we do have the tax credits, tax incentives. Um, and even if I wasn't in a tax incentive place, I think it's important to, to know what's going on in the industry. It's like Texas, um, 
is just now doing tax incentives. I think they it was like hundreds of millions of dollars um, that they're putting into um, tax residuals for film companies. Now, as Louisiana, that does affect me. They're neighbors, friendly neighbors. It could be good, it could be bad, but you really want to get ahead of it. So stay in touch with your industry, stay in touch with your contacts, um, stay in touch with your skills. Um, let's see. Uh, you know, it, and I guess if I can end on anything additionally, like the industry is always changing, rapidly growing. Um, you really want to just like lean into as much as you can. Never shy away from things that are changing. Um, it takes a lot of long nights, a lot of what ifs, and a lot of news, but you build a web of connections and you'll always catch something. Um, so that's my very long-winded stage advice. If anybody has any questions, I would love to answer them. So Madeline, usually the uh, uh, students are a little bit slow to ask questions, so I usually uh, prime the pump, if you will. Okay. Um, how do you feel about if our students uh, are interested in connecting with you on LinkedIn? Um, is that something that you're open to? Oh, very much so. Um, I would say, like, even if you've never met somebody on LinkedIn and you're interested in connecting with them, go ahead and do it. I've added people that, like, are friends of friends, as I would say, or um, even if we're interested in applicants, like, we will add applicants on LinkedIn um, and then review their LinkedIn before we even, uh, you know, go into a meeting with them. Um, I think LinkedIn is like a really, really important tool. Join forums, join groups on there. Um, it's talking because people are noticing. I mean, again, it's a very small industry. People will notice you. Okay. Um, if anybody listening to this was interested in becoming a project manager, what advice would you have for them on what they should be doing at this stage here as early as, you know, getting ready to graduate or halfway through the program or something like that? Um, I would say definitely take uh, some Excel classes. I would say like a lot of our work, believe it or not, is like 90% spreadsheets, <laughs> especially in management. Um, it doesn't sound too luxurious, but I think the, the moments that we do have like on set things, like it really does, um, compensate for the amount of spreadsheets I deal with on a daily basis. Um, but yeah, like learn Excel, I would say definitely again, take business classes, learn how to market yourself, learn how to protect yourself. Um, and I always use the word protect because in the business world, I feel like you're on the offense, but you also have to be on the defense. Um, and for project management, I mean, get familiar with the structure and the pipeline of um, post work. Uh, learn how shots go from coming in from a client or even how they're shot on set to how do they complete. Like, not just from an artist standpoint, but what happens um, if we get like a change of scope in the middle of thing, like ask questions. I've had artists uh, ask if they can sit in on meetings and we are always like happy to do that at our company. Um, I'm always happy for visibility and I'm sure a lot of people feel that way, but the, the main point is to ask, um, always just ask it doesn't hurt for people to say no. And also, I mean, it's positive because people will see how interested you are. And that's how I got my, my break into the industry. Like I was listening in on some guy's boss and I said, I'm super enthusiastic about your work. Is there any opportunity for me to do an internship? And he's like, I know exactly what to do. And we still work today. So. Okay. Um, so being from LSU, I, I have to ask, do you know Greg Nelson? Greg Nelson. Um, is he in the DMAE? I don't know. He's he's a, an instructor at LSU. He was my uh, supervisor at my first job. Hmm. I might know him. I, I think so. I graduated in 2015. Um, I still stay in touch with this guy, but I'm mostly with Derek Ostrensko, Mark Albanel. I think Greg works in, um, is it the film? Um, he works as the film and television guy. Yeah, I'm not sure which department. Um, so question for you that, that that's sort of topical, uh, the writer strike that's going on. Have you seen this affecting what's going on, uh, you know, kind of going down the chain as far as uh, into, you know, production like at Crafty Apes? Has this affected what you guys are doing? Right. So it's been like the perfect storm of strikes this year. We also have the ZGA um, talking. We also had the Producers Guild 
talking as well. Um, I'm not CGA side. Uh, and I guess I'm CGA as well. So um, I'm lucky enough to be a part of a team that, again, like we all are trying to stay two months ahead at all times. Um, we kind of saw the writer strike coming and we stacked as much as we could um, work for later in the year. Baton Rouge is doing a little better than other studios because, again, we have the tax incentives and we have just like a really elite team of artists down here. Um, hmm. I would say with the writer strike, um, obviously, like we are very supportive. We're very supportive of unions. Uh, we want them to get what they have. It does, we do see some effects down the line. I would say if it went past fall, that's when the effects industry really has to start worrying. Um, but I mean, until then, I, I believe it's going to clear, clear up by the end of the summer. Um, as far as work, some of our stuff has gotten put on hold. Uh, luckily, we have contracts, so even when that, that work comes off a hold, we will have it. Um, what else? What else? It definitely affects um, our timetable. Of the last couple months, we've been scrambling to kind of just like reorganize a little bit. Uh, we had a leg up, fortunately, because like we did foresee this coming. We took the rumor serious. So in January and February, we're planning for what does it look like if we don't have these projects? What would it look like if we, um, like if we shuffle some people around or shuffle vacation? So I guess it was more of like a, um, a think tank situation. Um, and definitely like community here is really important because we were asking um, other studios, what are they doing? We were asking, like how it's affecting indie studios. We're getting information on like from ILM. We, we talked with ILM, we're like, how is this affecting you guys? How are y'all combating it? Um, so it really is like a community um, issue, but so we're, I guess, studying it and trying to conquer it as a community. Um, I hope that answered your question. I feel like it's really long-winded. So effects would be shuffling schedules around, prepare for the unpreparable. <laughs> I do have a question coming from our YouTube community. Uh, Walter Bender wants to know, uh, with business, what do you hope uh, to do? Hey, Walter. Um, so with my business degree, I'm concentrating in project management. I want to go on to take, I think it's a specific test for project management that in case, um, if anything ever was to happen to the film industry, which I don't believe it will. Um, I mean, people are still media hungry. People are still hungry for content. Um, I would be able to pivot into other fields as needed. Um, so as getting my MBA opens doors for me to be a better producer, um, which I'm trying to learn more AP duties, assistant producer duties. Um, the other thing would be if I do, if something does happen to the film industry, the VFX industry, I can pivot. Uh, so with my project management license, I can go into um, stores for frames and stuff like that. I can go work for um, company three or something that involves more tech-based stuff, uh, overseas projects. Because at, I think at the management level, you get to a point where it all starts becoming kind of like the moving and the ebbing of flowing of like inventory prices, stuff like that, um, which is a more of a business way of viewing it uh, versus the creative that I've come from. Okay. Um, I don't see any other questions, so um, I guess that's uh, that's all we have. But I really appreciate you uh, coming out and speaking to our students today, Madeline. We really uh, appreciate your uh, your insights into the industry. Oh, yeah, somebody has a question here. Yes, Mariel. Uh, Mariel, me. yeah, go ahead. It's me. Um, no, I was going to ask, so I know you've also done, um, you've done a lot of interviewing as well. Um, especially being a project manager, when you are interviewing people or poten potential artists or, or otherwise for any any event, um, what gets you excited about somebody? Like what's something that makes you, like what, if, when they leave the interview, you're kind of like, oh, I, I felt really good about that. Because I know I, interviews can be really awkward on both yeah. ends. You know, I, yes. I know you know, <laughs> and I know they can be really awkward all around. But you you kind of know, like when someone walks away, you're like, oh, I really like that person. You know, so yeah, that's my question. Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, and like you said, interviews, and here's the secret to all interviews. Uh, interviews are awkward on both ends. 
Um, you never know what's going to happen when you go in. It's kind of like a first date where you're like, we're supposed to talk about stuff. Like, I have your resume. We read over it. Like, I think we already have, like, an idea of um, all of your skills when we go in. I would say, like, for me, if, if I can connect with that person, if I feel like that person has a positive attitude, um, is confident, that's a really big one because that's something I struggled with with interviews for a long time is being confident about my work. Um, I would say if you can make somebody laugh, like you nailed it. Um, like don't risk <laughs> too many risky jokes. If you can make somebody laugh, um, like that's something that stands out to me personally or like if you vibe with them or connect with them. Um, so when you go into interviews, always like I would do research on who's interviewing you beforehand. See if you can find any connections and get them talking. Um, we've had people that we've been in interviews with who were supposed to be 30 minutes and we talked to them for like an hour and a half and they got the job. So like, um, you know, vibe with people. It's not like we already know about the skills and stuff like that. Just, you know, like you really want to showcase like your personality and like things that you can bring in beyond your resume. Awesome, thank you. Well, there is another question from Tessa Strebel here on YouTube. Um, says, to go along with that, is it pretty good to be honest? Um, it depends on the degree of honesty. I, I usually come in and you really want to learn how to, like, again, how I said with marketing and business classes, you really want to learn how to um, control a conversation. So if I, um, if I interviewed somebody that said, you know, like one of my weak points is that I don't, um, I, I, I have a hard time missing deadlines or something like that. Like somebody said I have a hard time missing deadlines. That would be a red flag for me. But instead of saying a hard time missing deadlines, they would say, um, you know, like how strict are your deadlines? Do you always have them? Um, is there going to be somebody checking in on my work or are you all more hands off? So um, I would say, like, ask back, if that makes sense. Like, you want to find a good fit. So instead of saying, like, or another example would be, you know, I feel like my skills are too soft for this, this type of work. Just say, like, do you have a men's work program? Like, I, you know, just coming out of school, you want to be honest as in, I want, you know, I'm just coming out of school. Like, I don't really have, like, the whole thing down, but I would love to learn. You know, like, we want to hear stuff like that, where they're saying, like, here's something I'm on, like, here's something I'm really worried about, but, like, I immediately start talking about stuff, how to feel, like, to fix it and, and work with the people that you're interviewing with. So the follow-up uh, part of this question from Tessa is, say that you have, like, a social anxiety or just general anxiety, is it good to be open about that, or is it something that someone should sort of downplay? Oh, don't downplay it. Um, I think almost everybody I work with has some kind of social um, anxiety uh, or anxiety around it. You can feel it. Um, I'm sure, Mariel, you could probably tell, like, a lot of people that we work with are anxious um, or, like, don't like to speak up. Uh, that doesn't matter too much with us. Like, in interviews, it might be a little more difficult. But if you go in and just say, you know, I'm typically a quiet person, but I would love to answer any questions, um, and I would love to really have some great chats with you today. It's like if you get out in front of it, um, it kind of shows, like, it's not – it's like a part of who you are. It's not defining of you. You say like, here's just something that I like, this is just a part of my personality. Um, we have people that are supervisors that hate talking publicly. Um, and so they'll keep their cameras off and stuff and how they, they combat it is they, they stick to chat and stuff. I, I will add on to that just to, uh, just to sort of agree with that wholeheartedly. We, uh, we tend to attract a lot of uh, people who are socially awkward, I guess, the best way to play it, to say it, um, here at Dave School. Um, in our industry specifically, because we're artists, we tend to attract a whole lot of people who are often socially awkward. Um, so it's not uncommon at all. Mm -mm. Oh, we don't even give it a second thought. Like that, it's just normal for us. And we're super accommodating. All right. Well, that's all the questions that I see coming through YouTube. Um, so again, thank you so much for your time today, Madeline. Of course. Yeah, anytime, guys. Thank you all so right. much. Thanks, Maddie. Bye.